Hey, you want to get high, man? Let's stimulate your mind. Get up, Chucky! What have we got here? A fucking comedian. Hmm, Rojan Kim? Welcome to the Rojan Kim cast. It's me, Rojan Kim. Yes, Thank you for joining me on this March 10th. Nine. I don't know what day it is. I know it's Monday because this is the day I'm supposed to do this podcast. So that's why I know it's Monday. No idea what day it was. Monday, the 9th, 2020. 3, 9, 2020. The square three goes into nine three times. Wow, what does it mean? Absolutely nothing. Yes, numbers. The key to reality, said Pythagoras. That's what Pythagoras said. Is he right? Well, I mean, so. F- oh, geez, sorry. So I'm trying to scoot up, and my dog Badger is under my desk. So now I have to use my desk like two feet away from the actual top of it. So I'm just bending over. I'm like craning over. To no, I'm exaggerating. I'm fine. What is the nature of reality? That's what <laughs> I've got a real doozy of a show today. Uh, I wanted to tackle what is the nature of reality. I think we can do it in. I have to try to do it in under 25 minutes, just so I can um, maintain my data plan. My data. <laughs> my da- Maybe I should just. God damn it! Should I just buy more data? I have a job now i feel like i could probably do that but then is it slippery slope isn't it what's where did i maybe i just do one of these every day what if i just do it you know what quarantine you know the time of quarantine is coming y'all it's coming and it's really for the greater good honestly as somebody who's not really in a risk uh you know one of the risk groups i'm not old man 80 uh 80 plus if you're over 80 your shit is like 10 20 (laughs) percent you're like you're gonna die um so in an attempt to save the boomers, save them. Let's save the boomer, you know, because coronavirus is real, you know. It's not going okay, boomer. It's going KO, boomer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's knocking boomers out. It's fucking crazy. You know, and I'm like, come on, let's save them. I know, sure, they are the most greedy generation in all of human history and have extracted more wealth than any other generation previous and have, in fact, as a total aberration to history, have come out with more wealth than their children. That's never happened before. Boomers did it. So let's give it to them, guys. The the boomers, they fucking, they really did it. No one's done it. I mean, this is something, you know what I mean? Greatest generation. What do they do? Stop Hitler, right? Stop Hitler. Fucking stop, you know, Japan. Stop fucking the slavery of Korea, you know, the <laughs> stop the extermination of Jews and homosexuals and gypsies and whatever. Well, that's all that's all they did. But you know what the boomers did? The boomers kept it all. They said you can't take it with you. Well, you can, and the boomers proved it. The boomers, you know, this virus is affecting them at a disproportionate rate and so here's the whole thing, you know. Um Honestly, America should probably be in a quarantine type situation, you know, like the stuff that Italy and China are trying to do too late. What they did was too late. It was too late. They announced it, whatever. You know, it should really just be a strict draconian thing for like a month. And then a lot of this stuff would subside because community contact is how it spread. But you really can't do that in America. You think you could stop people from fucking being free? You can stop their freedom? You stop them right now in Italy. You go to jail for six months for violating quarantine. You know what I mean, China is China, so they'll just fuck you up. They'll do whatever they want to you for violating quarantine. But here, it's just going to be a real, ooh, it's going to be just like a real feelings based kind of <laughs> like I don't feel that I should be quarantined. It's just like oh god, what are you, you know? Or like you know, I don't believe. I mean, people don't believe in a round earth. You know, people don't believe in germs. People don't believe vaccines people don't believe in things so what is reality huh what is it guys four minutes in and we're trying to get down to the nitty greedy nitty greedy nitty needy greedy nitty gritty of reality so pythagoras back to that guy right what does he do fucking measure triangles yeah he did that came up with all that stuff Pythagorean theme. Oh my God. Can't speak. That was a phone call. I got intro. I'm Joe Bidening. I'm sundowning. 
I can't. This is evidence of cognitive decline. I can't. Oh, no. Is it all the marijuana? Is the marijuana actually causing dementia? Uh, do I have early onset dementia right now? Oh, I'm... Uh, well, I keep forgetting what I'm saying. I keep jumping from tangent to tangent. <laughs> I mean... I could be high, but I could have dementia. I could be paranoid, uh, but I could be experiencing Alzheimer's right now. I mean, you wouldn't even know it. That's the crazy thing about Alzheimer's. You have no idea it's happening. I bet, I bet you might have some. You might be like, uh-oh, I think it's happening. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's why it's pretty scary. You know? And, you know, can an Alzheimer's person tell you what reality is? No. But can you tell that person what it is? Probably not either. You know what I mean? So then what is it? Reality, I mean, then it makes sense why we got to use numbers. Numbers, we got to have a basis, a reference. Please, let's just agree on some stuff, like ones and twos and threes and all that stuff. You know, we can agree on that, and then we don't have to, we can argue about all the other shit. And that's what Pythagoras said. He also didn't eat beans because he thought they had souls in them, like little human souls. You know, so you can't be, um, can't win them all, right? Can't win them all. Speaking of winners, reality winner. Do you know who that is? Reality Winner. That's her name. Reality Winner. Reality Winner is a, is a, a whistleblower who leaked a NSA, or at least she's purported to have leaked an NSA document to The Intercept that showed proof that uh, Russians, not, not clear if it was the government or Russian nationals, were attempting to hack um, our uh, software company that did election data. You know, so they gave it, gave it to the Intercept, and then, uh, and then of course, um, I guess under the Trump administration or under the whistleblower thing, you know, she violated the law. They got her. But the weird thing is, okay, this could be like proof that, um, you know, the whole Russia Gate thing. I mean, like, why aren't the Democrats? I don't understand why this lady is in jail. Why is Reality Winner in jail? Why isn't she uh, lionized? Why isn't she a hero of the? Democratic Party, why aren't they holding her up being like, Trump put her in jail because she had proof that this whole thing, this whole thing, you know, that these uh, spy, that Russians have hacked our elections. She's got the proof and she tried to leak it and then now they're punishing it. We're like, why didn't they go with that? Like, what? It seems like the perfect thing to um, back up your case. Plus, she's a woman. You know, Trump's like grabbing her by the pussy and so we could be like, so why aren't, why isn't she a hero? I don't, understand and i think it might have to do with the fact that despite the fact that there was evidence that some russians not sure if it was the government or not were hacking a software company it just wasn't enough it just wasn't enough right why wouldn't they just throw that why wouldn't that be part of the evidence could it be because the nsa actually reported that it was only moderately confident <laughs> that um the Russians were hacking us, you know, that the Russians would actually influence us, you know, uh, could that be why? Maybe that's why, it'd be, you know, because if they actually did use her as a hero and you examined what she did and then it would actually undermine the narrative, could that be why? Is this lady in jail because she is not helpful? Like, she would be a hero. Free! Remember Chelsea Manning? Chelsea Manning was supposed to be a hero. Remember Bush put her in jail? You know, Obama kept her in jail. Obama and, uh, freed her after seven years. <laughs> I guess after seven years, he was like, now justice can be, you know, like, you know, because she was Bradley back then, became Chelsea in solitary confinement, essentially. Fucking had, held her naked. Naked and solitary. Standing, you know? Somebody who has gender dysphoria, you know, somebody who had been, like, made fun of um, his whole life as being, you know, a sissy or whatever, you know, and then even went forward sent a picture of himself in drag to his superior office. You know, and he's like crying out for help. So what do they do to sexually humiliate the guy? And you know what? She got out. She got out and was okay. Then they tried to get her to testify against Julian Assange. And she was like, nah, nah, I already testified in the military court and I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to fucking help you railroad Assange. What do they do? Threw her in jail. This is, is this not a hero? I mean, this could be a hero of the left, right? A trans um, military hero, a whistleblower, r spilling the beans about the reality of the Iraq war, right? Why isn't she a hero? Why isn't she lionized by the the left? Like, I would assume she'd be 
You know, I gonna okay. The right, I get it. The right typically is like you do what the government says. The government, you know, the government is right, and you know maybe might does make right, and maybe we need this. And you know, that's I get that. That's the right wing position. The left wing position is supposed to be contrary to that. They're supposed to be like, hey, maybe the people actually have the power. It should be the state crushing us, and maybe we need whistleblowers and muckrakers to shine the light on power and expose things that they don't want exposed in order to maintain their power. And wouldn't it be very convenient if those in power could co-opt, let's say, the news, the media organization that seeks to inform the public and sort of create reality for them, create this shared consensus reality for them, wouldn't it be in their best interest to have some influence on those or perhaps influence them all outright? And then in turn influence people. Wouldn't that be convenient? I mean, maybe I'm being a conspiracy theorist. Maybe I'm conspiratorial. But why reality winner? Reality winner. Why is she losing? Why is it not a reality about reality? Right? Chelsea Manning. Why is she in jail? Why is she in jail? I had an argument with a buddy of mine. Might be listening. Rob, you know. um, And I just, I I honestly, look, here. Here's, I honestly believe that she's in jail because she's a whistleblower. After all the years it's been years and years of all her shit coming out and what they've done to her and what's been happening with the and all that it's like all of that okay seems pretty clear that she could just fucking bend the knee and say yeah i'll just fucking do whatever you want just testify and fucking i'm free you know she could do that but instead she chose to jail right right and so like i had you know my buddy rob and i was just telling him about this and he was just like skeptical and he just looked up a times article about it you know read a couple paragraphs and was just like there see she broke the law and in my view if she broke the law she deserves to go to jail now here's the whole thing rob's not like a conservative right wing guy he's not the kind of guy who's like the law is the law i mean he fucking used to smoke weed and be in porn and you know what i mean like he's not you know so he's not like clearly not like a but even he was like well it says right here that she broke you know and he you know it took some conversating some time you know for me to be like well i mean isn't it true that power corrupts and people you know i had to kind of walk him through my line of reasoning just the idea that um there are power structures who are threatened by anybody revealing things that they don't want to reveal to the public and even though the media is supposed to do that they're not doing it so we need whistleblowers and then when whistleblowers come along they're demonized by the media and the state and punished punitively punished so the article in the new york times which shows that chelsea manning broke the law and doesn't actually lay out why she's going to jail over principle makes it just seem like oh well see she's stupid for not breaking for she's stupid she should just bend the knee and do what they say and just you know but if you think about that as a very establishment very just like this is the law legalism law you know when weed was illegal i was smoking weed because i was like fuck the law (laughs) law fuck the law so to me you know it's hard for me to be like yes you're right she broke the law you know like that the law is you know because i'm operating in a principle outside of the law not outside of law but like morality you know what i mean laws are supposedly supposed to reflect morality right the laws are supposed to be just the laws are supposed to reflect what we think is right but in essence, that's not true. What the laws actually do is reflect dominant convention. What we want people to feel is right. So there are certain things like murder, you know, whatever, st- stealing. These are just like easy, not easy, but you know what I'm saying? These are issues that people have run up against aside from having a state. People have been stealing, murdering, you know, and all those things. How to work it out, you know, the state became the mediator, right? Somebody has to step in. Somebody has to have a monopoly in violence. You can't just murder people out of revenge. You know, somebody has to come in the state right state has to do it but in the exchange part of the social contract is the idea that we defer to the state we go all right we're going to give up some rights state you know we do that and i think there's that's there's nothing i don't know i'm not saying that's right or wrong i'm just saying that just seems to be how it is right there are states there are people there's a social contract there's some implicit agreement that the state should protect us or at least know what they're doing when they take our money and tell us we can do and not do things you know what i mean like we're giving up certain things for the protection of the state got it great but does that mean in a free society such as ours where we have the first amendment where we have the second amendment you know there's a reason why the first two amendments are about um dissent and opposition you know what i mean possible revolution you know what i mean like there's a reason why that exists why it's a check on the power of the state the state can't just say absolutely you cannot you know you can't say that we're bad 
or you go to jail. You can't do that. You know what I mean? And then if they try to enforce it, we got the guns. You know what I mean? Like, so that there's a reason for that. And there's a reason why we as Americans, okay, have a unique perspective. And frankly, probably a very annoying one to the rest of the world. You know, because <laughs> the, the whole world, the rest of the world is that freedom. They ain't got no freedom of speech. They ain't got no fucking, you know, you can't arm yourself. You can't just do whatever you want in terms of like, thinking and saying stuff you know what i mean like you can't do that that's very threatening to them so to them they're like ah jesus america yeah it's very cute not only that we're the most warmongering motherfuckers in the world so we go around we say whatever we want we do whatever we want we kill whoever we want that's what we do right i think it's just um a knee-jerk thing as human beings we can't help it because i think we're social creatures you know, we're herd creatures. We look to leadership. We d- These sort of constructs are long-lasting and really, like, I think almost biological. You know, I don't think you can really undo a lot of this stuff except through perhaps years and years of drug abuse like me. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, I think for me a lot of structures were shattered and then I had to put them back together. And so that's this is how I have to be. Or else I have to die. You know, I have to kill myself or kill people. Or, you know, it's it's not, like, harmonious. So I have to find that harmony. I had to find it in myself. And it's a continuous battle, right? But that's just me. That's not everybody, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember when I was telling my aunt and uncle about my dad and how he left my stepmom and how he just fucking up and left her for this younger woman, whatever. And it was fascinating because both of them my aunt and uncle, who are not close to my dad, in fact, have every reason to be um, sort of take glee in the fact that he ran off uh, with this younger woman or whatever. Like, I had every reason to just kind of be like, ah, the fucking guy. You know, like, even them, In I remember in the moment when I was telling them, they defended him, you know? They were like, well, maybe, you know, it's like maybe your dad... Maybe she, your stepmom was like kind of like going after your dad's money, and that's why he had to like get out. You know, maybe she was kind of like, do, you know, she was like, they were like kind of coming up with alternate theories as to why he left the house, opposed to the young pussy one. You know, <laughs> like maybe it wasn't young pussy, and maybe it was, you know, and it was just like, what? You guys even even talk to him or my stepmom? Like, I just talked to my stepmom in person and saw. She told me this whole story. Is like, you think I don't believe? You think she? Like, you can tell that she's lying, but I can't. The person who talked to her <laughs> doesn't even make sense. You know what I mean? That's how deep the conditioning is. The Confucianism is so deep and strong. They're like, no, big brother. No, big brother may have been acting justly and more. <laughs> you know, even though the, the obvious pattern of behavior is, um, you know, it's right there, right in front of your eyes. They're like, no, big brother must have, you know. And I think that that's just um, something that's very obvious. And you can see it happening now in society. You can see it happening. You know, I just had lunch with my uncle. And, um, you know, my uncle's like a, he went to Berkeley, you know. He's like a liberal L.A. lawyer guy. You know, he's pretty well off, very successful. You know, he's a family and all that. And um, he's very, he's a devout never-Trumper, you know. He's a never-never-Trump. Watches a lot of CNN and MSNBC, you know. I think maybe a little more CNN because he feels that it's balanced. Yeah, I think he even acknowledges MSNBC has some biases, you know. But but he's sort of that middle of the road kind of like, this is you know watching the news. And he grew up. He's ten years, fifteen years older than I am, so he is not as like I'm kind of like in the middle where I remember when there were only three channels, but now I see understand like I listen. I've been listening to Joe Rogan for like ten years, you know. Meanwhile, I had to like explain to my uncle what Joe Rogan was, you know. Like so, that's that's what I'm talking about in terms of the divide. You you know, like he is still it's all very traditional, and that's what he grew up with, and he's like kind of doing that, and it's just very interesting because you know. I think the typical argument he might have is like Trump is bad and then somebody's like Trump is good and then you just argue there, right? So my uh, my whole thing is I'll be like, yes, Trump is bad and these are the reasons why he's bad. So then tell me why the other side that's saying he's bad is not going after him for that, you know? And then that kind of skews things. And then inev- inevitably we start talking about war, which is very interesting. And then, you know, and I was just saying, you know, the only, I think, a good principle is anti-war. We can just kind of, let's just say go on the anti-war principle. You know, you have to stick by principles, or whatever. And then, you know, my uncle was kind of seeking to, um, I wouldn't say he was seeking to undermine what I was saying. He was, tr- he was saying he was seeking to understand, but in a way that is in the language of um, 
well, he's a lawyer, so there's a little sophistry in there. So he's just like basically trying to pin me into a corner and say that like, okay, well, what if you were here and you learned that over there in another country they were like amassing, you know, and coming at any moment, at any moment they're gonna come and get you. You don't think that we should go get them? And I'm like, what? <laughs> right? I was just like, I mean, there's so many things we have to say is true. First, we have to say there's them that this whole them thing is true and that they're gathering right that's also true they're mobilizing to attack us so that that's also true and that they're gonna come and attack us and if they do that'll be the end of us like all of that has to be true all that has to be true in order for me to go like okay fine it was good because you know the idea is that it was good we went to world war ii this is the last good war and then that's the war we all point to to justify why we should keep going to war because we can't let that happen again we can't go in there you know whatever they're over there but that's exactly also my point it seems to be like a very convenient excuse to go to war and invade another country by using the by claiming that they're going to attack you first i mean it's just very convenient that we are the ones attacking everybody else all the time right I mean, we got attacked on 9-11, but that wasn't even a real military assault. That was a fucking terrorist assault. That wasn't, we weren't even prepared for that. So what the fuck were we doing this whole time, fighting the Cold War or whatever, you know, when we got blindsided by terrorists, by just guys in a plane? So then we were like, all right, we got to fucking fight terror, war on terror. We're fighting terror now. So is terror gone? Nah, we actually created new terror groups and made it worse, and we're still, I guess, fighting terror, we're, we're, which are we? I don't know. It's not clear. None of that's clear. So you're saying, you know, it's the same language that uh, during the impeachment the Democrats used. We're fighting them over there, so we don't fight them over here. That time was the Russians, which was the same excuse they used for the Cold War, for the Korean War, right? Meanwhile, you know, I'm sitting there. My cousin Han's there. My cousin Basil's there. They may or may not be listening. But Basil, you know, Basil's fucking... He fucking went to war, and he fucking, he was all fucked up from it, and I mean, he's okay now, but it wasn't the fucking best experience of his life, you know what I'm saying? I don't think he's like, yay. Yeah, I'm sure there's good stuff that came out of it. I'm sure he's not like, you know, whatever. Like, he's he's okay. He's dealing with it. He's managing, but it was not easy coming back and fucking coming back to this place after, where you know, we sent him. You know what I'm saying? And it's hard for me to be like, yeah, it was good we sent him over there. And honestly, he's not dead or fucking, he doesn't have any limbs blown off and he's not fucking, you know what I mean? There's like other people who are way worse off. You know, he's not homeless. He's not gone, you know, he's not gone for good. He's not fucking taking fucking fentanyl lollipops or trying to kill himself. You know, he's not fucking dealing the way most veterans are, which is fucking being crushed and killed by uh, our society who just doesn't seem to give a fuck about them and the economy doesn't really seem to want to help them, the VA, the state, everybody who said that you were doing this for right, we're doing this so that we're protecting, thank you for protecting us over here by fighting over there. But when you come back over here, fuck you, <laughs> right? Like what? I don't know. It's hard for me to... Be like, yes, war is justified. It's good when you see what's happening. Look at that. You don't think that this has an effect on the country, all these veterans coming back? You don't think these uh, mass shootings, you don't think the um, sort of danger of having um, 20 years of war unchecked? You don't think there's any um, effect on society? You can't have guns and butter, they said. That was the thing they used to say. You can't have guns and butter because... Yeah, you know, one's got to go. But you know what? We were like, fuck you. We're going to do both. We're going to have guns and butter. We're going to borrow a lot of Chinese money to do it. <laughs> okay? Going to do it. All right? So that's why Chinese, you know, thank you, China. China. Thank you, China, for delivering us into the 21st century with the coronavirus. We should be thanking them. Should be thank. Are you kidding? We're fucking barbarians, backwards barbarians. We'd have never been up to date with our fucking diseases. Right? Fucking China. Like, they fucking way, way... God damn it, I forgot her name. <laughs> Wei Xing Lang. Fuck, Wei Zhe Li. Oh, I'm so racist. I can't remember her name. The lady who won the championship, the coronavirus won. Coronavirus wins. That's what the internet was saying after she beat up Joanna Yin Jacek. Coronavirus wins, you understand? After fucking Yoel Romero and Israel Adesanya put everybody to sleep by not wanting to lose. Coronavirus wins. They lose. Coronavirus wins. God damn it. This whole time I wanted to talk about Biden, but it's now, it's almost 25 minutes. I got, oh, Jesus. <sighs> Here's the thing. So I guess, you know, 
What was I talking about? Nature of reality? You're, I don't need to be talking about Biden. Look, the whole thing's going around right now. Biden, cognitive decline. Is he sundowning? Is it dementia? Is it? I don't know. I mean, it could be. It seems like there's a lot of evidence of it. A lot of footage. A lot. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be uh, any shortage of it. So it keeps coming, and uh, the media is saying, no, it's the Russians. The Russians, this is propaganda. The Russians are doing it. This is it. And honestly, I never understood what gaslighting was until, until like now when the news is telling me that what I'm seeing is not a poor old man trying to struggle through a sentence, but a stuttering problem and editing. Is it editing because there's actual just running footage and not even from like, you know, Prager U or Fox or whatever. I've been like talking like CNN and ABC. I'm talking about footage from just a few months ago. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of footage, guys. There's a lot of footage, and every time you say Russia, every time you say Russia did it, Russia, you know, it's just not effective. It's like the boy who cried wolf, right? Or of course, to be politically correct, the non-binary youth who cried canid quadruped. Oh God! I mean, this is why. This is why Trump won last time. This is why he might win again. Okay? I mean, there's a good chance he might not win just because everybody thinks he's going to win. I mean, that's really the only shot we got now. Okay? Besides coronavirus taking every, all the old people out. Okay? Those are our only shots. The economy crumbling because of coronavirus. Ah, uh, man. It's a rough one. God. And here's the whole thing. Meme. The meme war hasn't even begun, guys. That's the whole thing. A lot of the fucking establishment, centrist type people, the sort of middle of the road, conventional squares. They're squares. They're squares. Let's just squares. You know what I'm saying? Like the squares. They think the meme war started. They think this Biden thing is a meme war. They, they, it's not. It's just footage. It's just. It's just footage. It's not even. It hasn't even begun, guys. The meme war hasn't even begun. Okay. Just like the fucking pandemic. Just like the epidemic. Just like the quarantine that needs to. That is coming. Okay, it's looming. There's a meme war looming. Okay, and with the convergence of the virus and whoever become, and if it's fucking Biden who becomes the nominee, the meme war, we're, the left is dead because the left can't meme. Okay, the Bernie, Bernie faction can meme. You know why? Because they're fucking young internet kids, right? So those young internet kids, you got to put him. Listen, Trump won because he ran as anti-establishment. You throw Biden in there, he becomes anti-establishment again, even while being the incumbent. Okay, that's what you're giving him. Right? The centrists centrist can't meme. All right? Just because just, just they're square. Squares can't meme. They're lame. They're lame. They're not the kids. Okay? They're going to lose the meme war. All right? Just watch. You'll see. Okay? Meme wars are coming. All right? It's going to be brutal. Okay? Especially if it's fucking biting. So, whatever. Hey, I'm just eating the popcorn, watching this all go down. It's fascinating to me. And I am also thankful that I have you guys. Here, sharing my journey, um, my ramblings, my rantings, okay, my tenuous grasp on reality. <laughs> I mean, to anybody who's, you know, if, again, somebody who listens to CNN all day, I'm an insane, per- I'm a crazy man, an insane per- but whatever, man. That's just because you don't, you don't, um, I don't know, listen to podcasts or look at independent media. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, I'm one of millions, you know, who see this shit. Uh, so anyways one day hopefully one of those millions a few of those millions can come over to, uh, to listen to the old Rojan Kimcast what do you say huh about a couple of thousand or so or a hundred I don't know I got 12 it's fine 12,000 12 hundred thousand what 12 hundred thousand that's 1.2 million anyways we don't need to do math anymore We Andrew Yang is gone <laughs> okay guys thank you so much for joining me on the Rojan Kimcast um, you know the deal. Follow me on the Twitter, the Instagram. Follow me, on Facebook. Follow me everywhere. Hound me. Find me on Stitcher, Apple, Podcasts, Spotify. Pass this shit along. Pass it along. Tell people about the stupid podcast. <laughs> Tell stupid. Uh, oh no, I'm doing it. Biden again. Sundowning. Sundown kid. Burn Cassidy and the Sundown kid. I want to use this title. Get it to it. Okay. Thank you. Bye.